Hi there everybody, this is Matt with OT3D.org. This video is part of a series of videos that I am making designed to teach occupational therapy practitioners, educators, and students about applications for 3D printing in their practice. My goal is to provide videos, resources, and other instructional templates that will help walk you through the process of using a 3D printer. Now I've created quite a few videos on OT3D.org and its associated YouTube channel, but in this video what I'd like to do is walk you through the process from creating a print from scratch all the way to taking it into a slicer program and printing it out. And we'll walk through that step by step. If you haven't already watched it, I would highly recommend checking out the Introduction to Tinkercad video. Tinkercad is an excellent software that I reckon, recommend to most beginners. And my guide will walk you through each and every step of it. This guide will just take you a little bit further, getting you all the way to, through to the end of the print. And with that, let's get started. All right, so today, if you want to go ahead and hop into Tinkercad, sign in with your account, you can go ahead and follow along with this guide if you'd like to have kind of an instructional guide walkthrough. But today, what we're going to be doing is creating a piece of assistive technology. So one of the people in my class is doing a, an adapted golf program, and one of the things that she has requested from me is to create a golf tee that is a little bit easier to place a ball on for individuals that might have a little bit more trouble with their hand motion and bending over making it a little bit more stable when you're placing the ball on the tee. So what we're going to do is we are going to do that today. The very first thing that I would like to do is note that there are existing designs out there on Thingiverse and other websites. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to import a file that I found on Thingiverse that is a standard golf tee. Now what this is going to do is going to give me the measurements that I need to kind of base this around because I don't want to deviate from the original shape too much so there you can see I've imported it into Tinkercad using the import button up there. I'm actually going to rotate this 90 degrees because that's how I'll be taking some of my measurements. Drop it down to zero. Put the number in there. Okay. So, from here I have a couple different ideas. The first one is that the top of the tee has a divot in it that allows the ball to be placed, but on this one it's pretty small. So what I'd like to do is actually make it bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the golf tee here into its basic components. So what we have is a cylinder that makes up the middle of the golf tee. I'm actually going to increase the side so it's a little bit smoother. We have a cone, that's this area down here that allows the tee to stick into the ground. And up at the top we have a kind of cup shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a half sphere for that. Now let's see. So I have a reference picture and measurements you can see for this golf tee, but what I don't have is a reference for my golf ball. So what I did real quick is I looked that up, and what we can do is we can actually create a model that has that golf ball on it. And what I was able to find after a quick Google was that a golf ball has a diameter of about 42.67 millimeters. So being the diameter and it being a sphere, we can actually go ahead and change all of these measurements to 42.67 to get it perfectly round by clicking and typing that number in. There we go. There's our golf ball for reference. And it looks about right on that tee, so we can take that as fact. So the next thing that we can do is we can start taking some measurements from our tee the way that I'm actually going to do this is I'm going to take this whole square up here so that I can isolate just the height of the T from the cylinder here. So I'm going to put that hole there, combine these two shapes, and there we go. Now I've cut out that top half sphere and we can focus on the other two parts. So I can see that we are at about 56.6 .6 in length because it is on its side, we will be adjusting that here. So drag it up to 56. Let's see what our diameter is. So about 5 by about 5. So we'll say 5 by 5 for our diameter. So 5, hit the tab button, and 5. And there we go. That's the height of our T. Because we know that the diameter of our cylinder here was 5 by 5, I also know that the top of this, cylinder, this uh, little pyramid here is also going to be 5 by 5. Now looking at it right on, this looks quite a bit taller uh, than the T that I had to start, so I'm actually going to reduce the height of this, we'll say to about mm. 1 centimeter, 10 millimeters right there, and that looks pretty close. 
What I'll do next is I'm going to highlight both of these shapes. We're going to come up and use the Align tool up here. Use the Center function to get it totally centered, and I'm actually going to drop the cylinder down, the height of the cone, so that 10 millimeters that we were talking about earlier. Let me move that box so you can see it. And now we have a little party hat on top of our cone. I'm going to combine those two shapes so that it's all one piece, and you can see that it is all one piece. Now the height of our thing right now is 66. Let's actually ungroup our original T and see how tall it was. 68. All right, so we're pretty close. I'm going to raise this back up to where it's flat on the ground. You can see the zero right there. What we're going to do next is take the top of our half sphere here. I'm going to increase the size by a little bit. Let's say 30 by 30. We'll see how that looks. That looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center these two up by highlighting both, coming up to my align tool, hitting center, center, and we are already on the bottom. So right now, our T is 66 tall, while this T was 68.6. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to raise this up just a little bit. So it's about three. What I'll do next is I'm going to combine these shapes. Let's come up here to the Combine tool, and we're combined. All right, now one problem that we still have is that our T is not quite right. So if I come up here to the Mirror tool and I flip it over like that, you'll see that I have a flat surface right here, and that's not what I want. But that's why I made this golf bar earlier. So if I take this and I check the height at about 69 millimeters, we're going to raise this up to a little bit less than that. So we'll say 65 to start. What I'll do next is group these two items, making sure they're both in that highlight box. Hit center and center. There we go. Now this isn't quite what I want, but with any solid shape in Tinkercad, I can manipulate it after it's been placed. So if I want to drop it down one like that, I can do that. And what I'll do, because I have a flat surface in that pink shape right there, is make the sphere a hole. When I make that a hole, I can then combine both shapes and it'll give me a nice little divot that you can see if I can focus the camera. There we go. And that'll allow a golf ball to sit in while giving it a slightly wider base of support. And right now this is just a prototype. So I'll be sending this out for testing so that we can kind of see what are the strengths and weaknesses of it. But for now, this is a solid first prototype. Now that we have this, what we can do is actually export the shape. So what I'll do is I will click on it like this, come up to the export function. I typically use STLs because there were two shapes in the design, that original T and the one that we made. What I'm going to do is just select the selected shape because I only want to print the pink object, the golf tee that we've adapted. So I'll click on STL and that will download it as a start to finish guide. What I'll do next is I'll actually open this I have it set to open with Prusa Slicer. You can use Cura or any other slicer that you want, but I'll be using Prusa for my demonstration. So what I'll do is I will drag this over to Prusa. All right, I'll get this opened in Prusa real quick. See if I can drag it from my files into Prusa. I don't think you'll be able to see that on my screen, but you can do that by going into your files on your computer and literally dragging the file straight into Prusa and placing it in. So there we go, I have my T imported into my slicer. So let's next walk through the steps for the slicer itself. So first off, what I'm going to check is that my printer is set correctly to the uh, Prusa Mini, because that's what I'll be working with here today. And with that, that shifted it a little bit, so I'm actually gonna come up to this button right here and center it. Now you might notice that right now in its current orientation, I have a very small base of support. So that re would require me to use a lot of supports when printing. What I'm going to do instead is rotate it so that it's 90 degrees on its side. And the reason that I'm doing this instead of putting it on the T side down is because I want all the forces in this to be going along this axis because when we slice it, it'll be stacking up vertically. And if we do that, then we'll have long strands that connect the top of the T to the bottom of the T, and hopefully that'll make it a little bit stronger. Where if I had positioned it to where the T side was down, 
that would mean that I have very small layers here in the middle of the T, and that could lead to breaking a lot sooner. The downside of this way is it's going to take a little bit longer and we'll use a few more supports. I know that we're going to be printing in generic PLA. I'm actually going to switch that to Hatchbox PLA because that's what we happen to have here at my local makerspace. 0.2 millimeters quality should be plenty fine. If I wanted to get a little bit better detail, I could turn it up or I could turn it down. I'm going to change my infill to be around 60% because that's going to be plenty strong for the testing purposes that we'll be doing here today. And that should have all my settings except for supports. Because we have a floating object here, we can't print on nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our supports and select everywhere. After that, we can hit slice. The computer will process the code and the, this handy dandy little color guide will show you exactly what's doing what. So for the out, the orange here is my external perimeter, the green is where my supports are, and I can actually see that I'm going to have a plenty strong object because those strands are going all the way down to the top of the T. Unfortunately, I will have lots of supports to remove after this, but hopefully they won't be too bad. Now that I have my supports and everything sliced, I have double checked all of my things. I'm using Hatchbox PLA, a Prusa Mini. I'm using supports everywhere. My infill's at 60% and I'm okay with that quality level. What we're going to do next is export the G-code. And again, you won't be able to see this part, but I will show you. You would click on this button right here if you have a flash drive inserted or an SD card for your printer. The Prusa Mini uses a USB, so I'll be exporting to a, to a USB. I'm going to click on that, name it, hit export, and then I'll show you how to plug it into the printer. All right, so here I'm going to just eject the USB now that I've sliced it, take it out, and I'll be carrying it over to the little Prusa Mini. So I've already turned on the Prusa Mini and checked that it has enough filament, so I'll just be taking it over here, plugging the USB into the side. It's always upside down, so I'll always flip it over. And there's actually going to be a little preview that pops up for me. I'm going to hit print. And up next, what y'all are going to see is a short time lapse that shows the printing of this. So this print took about 53 minutes to do. I could have sped it up a little bit, but I wanted to get the quality right for this prototype stage, and I wanted it to not fail. So the faster you print, the more likely you are to have a fail. That being said, it's not a guarantee of any sort, one way or the other. So do what works for you and what works for your printer. Once we finish up this, you can see the supports on the bottom there. I'm going to take it off of the hotbed. This one wasn't very stuck down and I was able to just remove the supports with my hand. If I had struggled a little bit more, I could have used a flush cutter or an X-Acto knife to help out with that process. And that completes the print. Here it is next to another tee that I designed that actually stops it going into the ground so far, as well as a standard tee. And that will just about wrap it up. I appreciate you watching my video. If you'd like to check out a visual instructional guide, it'll be on ot3d.org. This has been Matt with ot3d.org, and happy printing!